sketchbook, you're going to label a page, draw six pretty decent sized circles, and get them labeled. First technique is hatching. Hatching is a series of parallel lines. Think about where you want your light source from. You can apply less pressure or more pressure to create darker values. The more lines you do towards the bottom, again, all parallel lines in one direction, the sh more shading that will create the circle to look like a sphere. Remember, shading helps make shape look like forms. You want to pause the video and finish your hatching technique. Next technique is cross hatching. Again, your light source. Start with hatching, series of parallel lines. Cross hatching, you're going to cross or go a different direction to create the shadowing. The more lines you do, the darker the area will look. The less lines, the lighter it will look. A series of parallel lines that cross each other. Don't forget to add your cast shadow, shadow that the sphere is casting down onto the table. Cross hatching. Pause your video and finish your cross hatching technique. The third step is called tonal. Pick a light source and start shading. You can start at the bottom, pretty dark. This is all about pressure, the amount of pressure you use on your pencil to create the shadow. As you go curving, notice the pencil's curving like the sphere would be curved, then less pressure for the next section. It's kind of like a value scale, creating a value scale with your pencil, and you can see those segmenting lines. Some people like that, some people like to not show that line. Again, it's a personal choice when you're shading in your spheres. And less pressure at the very top. See how light, see if you can get five different values in your sketchbook. Pause your video and do the tonal technique. Okay, next shading technique is swirling. Some call it squiggly. They're random swirly lines. It's all about your pressure. If you put more pressure at the bottom, it will make it look darker. Less pressure on your pencil. Almost like the pencil's whispering lightly at the top. Really swirling randomness to your lines. A lot of people like to do the cast shadow with um, just shading, but you can use swirling also. Remember to pause. Blending is the next shading technique. Some people call it smearing or smudging, but blending is one of the easiest, probably the one you know the most. You're using, adding some graphite, and then you're blending with your finger. You're smearing out to get the values. Different than tonal, you shouldn't see your changes of values. Uh, really split, um, blend that graphite to get those tones. Sometimes for the lighter tones, you don't even use your pencil. You just use your finger to smudge previous graphite. Again, don't forget your shadow on the opposite side as the light source. Blending. Pause the video to finish your blending technique. Okay, and then our last shading technique that I'm having you do is called pointillism. It's a series of dots that you randomly put on. However, you add more dots the closer you get to the bottom of your sphere. Again, we're trying to make these circles look three-dimensional into form. Less dots towards the top, more dots at the bottom. This is kind of a fun yet loud process. You'll know where your classmates are at when they are working on pointillism. 
think about where the values are at while you're adding this. Continue to improve. Take a look at all your shading techniques and make sure that you have all of them completed, that your circles now look like spheres. Your sheet in your sketchbook should look something like this. Remember to have me sign off on your sheet.